Your Whoa. show is going to be so, and I mean this. I, I, it is. They asked me a year ago what I thought, and I said, "See those two, put them together, change the network." So the show starts when September fifth, day after Labor Day. It's oh, the God. same. Your show launched the day after Labor Day. Skip yeah. and Shannon launched the day after Labor Day. Just We're going to launch. Don't the day screw after with Labor your day. hair. It's what? the only oh. advice. Please just <laughs> don't screw. I love both of your what you got upstairs. Don't screw with your hair. Okay, thank That's you. That's the only well, advice. Well, there's no chance of me messing with mine. But Nick, he's a little he's a little young. They're in this trying business. to get me to grow my hair out. It'll never happen. Uh, man, we 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 did some. A, we photoshopped man. some pictures of him. We he, is an extent. You took a picture of me to and see then what you downloaded would look like? it. No, app. he looks like a European soccer player. He looks oh, amazing with a hair. I'm not. Not okay, happening. I got a couple of props. I got a couple of little things, little skits mm -hmm. and stuff, bits I'm going to be doing on him. All right. So <laughs> let's start with this. Let's start with actual Lonzo Ball last night. Um, my takeaway is that felt big. I don't know how good he's going to be, but it felt big for the league, mm -hmm. right? Like he should be a Laker, right? Well, Colin, you and I talk about this all the time. It's about timing and location in life. Like this is the right timing and the right location for him. You know, there's a lot of athletes lot like myself. If I wouldn't have gone to Minnesota, they hadn't have played a three-receiver offense, I would have been an above-average pro. But because where I went and what they did for me on and off the field and the offense and the people they put around me, that's the reason why my career ended like that. Magic Johnson taking over the Lakers and being able to get a player with the talent, a local talent, like ball, th that just doesn't happen. And, and the Lakers not falling to the fourth pick where they Whoa. would have lost this year's pick and the 2019 that would have, pick would have gotten fired <laughs> no not because of that right but because but he wouldn't have been able to he wouldn't have been able to acquire players over the next three years because even if you're right colin that all these young guys are going to take time now when you're pitching a paul george or whomever mm -hmm. you can show them a path listen we're going to have this top pick. We're, we only are losing one draft pick, next year's draft pick. We've got Brandon Ingram. We've got Julius Randle. My guess is they maybe flip D'Angelo Russell yeah. for something. Yeah. And then you've got your young core. You bring in a star player. If they just drop two, what's so funny is this. Laker fans, our buddy Ross, who's the social media whiz around here, and all the Laker fans around here were so mad at the Lakers for the five-game winning streak at the end of the year yeah. because they fell from the second ping-pong ball spot to the third. The five-game winning streaks don't change their history. It saved them because the team, they would have had Phoenix's ping-pong balls. <laughs> Phoenix ended up with the fourth pick. Phoenix ended up the team that was supposed to where the Lakers got wanted to be. They ended up with the fourth pick. For Phoenix, that's not so bad. Okay, so we goes two to four. The Lakers would have gone two to nothing and lose the 2019 pick. It changes their whole future history. You know, future it, it, history. It, it's funny about uh, <laughs> access. It's like Jeff Bezos is from Albuquerque, but he went to Princeton, and Bill Gates had a computer in his high school that he snuck into. That's why I tell sometimes my affluent friends. You're hurting yourself eventually if you don't help poor people because in those families are the driven, willful kids that become the next great kid. You can't just have Princeton full of prep school kids. Right. you got to go to Albuquerque and find Jeff Bezos. There is something about access. The Kardashians would never have been them born in Omaha. I kind of think Lonzo Ball, if he's just a 12-12 player, I think – now tell me if I'm nuts here. His access to L.A., I think he's going to be a star day one. I mean, he has star qualities. He, he has unusual attributes as a basketball player, but he has a very, very good look. The pace for which they play will bring excitement. And being, a, being the marquee player on the Lakers is always a good gig. So I think it's the perfect spot for him. And the, his style, is it, it's unfair to compare anyone to Magic. Magic's no. one of the – five greatest players in the history of the sport. Yes. But the selfless style, the style of I can score, but that's not what I'm out here for. It's to be able to be mentored by the best to ever do what you're trying to do. It's huge. It's something that, to be totally honest, I feel like I have personal experience from. Being able to be mentored by the greatest to ever do something, you cannot put a price on the value of that. And the work ethic. Who Magic Johnson is, is going to go into ball. Like, it's going to go into Lonzo. Like, he's going to get it. My brother was drafted 1980 in the second round by who? The Los Angeles Lakers. Who was their star player? Magic Johnson. He called me. I remember I was in the ninth grade. They went to training camp in Hawaii. 
He said, magic wins everything. From the t- even in the cars, from going from the, the gym to eat, his car, he's going the fastest. The two-mile run, the team has to run. He wins all that. Wind sprints, he wins all that. So that right there, and at this time for the Lakers, when they really need a star, and magic taking over basketball, I just think it's meant to be. Both you and I, we actually say all three of us, tend to really like LeBron James. And I believe everybody uh, needs a trampoline in life. Um, everybody. Uh, I've, I've worked with people in my business who never get the good boss. They never get the good break. They never get the good partner, which is why I think you guys are going to be a home run. I know it. I don't think it. Um, Golden State's dominance doesn't just help Golden State. I think it's the trampoline that if LeBron beats them from the – they dominate the Western Conference, it's the trampoline eventually – this year, next year, over Michael. You have been, Nick, critical of the Warriors. You you have not been on the Warrior band. I'm just sick of them, man. I'm just sick of it. I, I don't mind arrogance. I prefer it to be either authentic arrogance. I didn't like what LeVar did to Christine, right. but LeVar, prior to that interaction, I'm like, hey, this guy's unapologetically himself. He's going to be arrogant. He is who he is, and he's built up these three boys. At least he earned it. The Golden State Warriors pretending they're smarter than everyone in the world. When they were going into a season, going to play David Lee over Draymond Green, they got lucky that David Lee got hurt, and they figured it out. The reason they can acquire all this talent is because Steph Curry hurts his ankles, so they get him for $11 million a year instead of $20 million a year. You didn't earn that. Mm-hmm. You got fortunate on that. And then you bring in, after you choke away what's supposed to be the greatest season ever, <laughs> you bring in Kevin Durant. They didn't need Kevin Durant. They just needed Kevin Durant to not be on the Thunder. He could be their valet and they're okay. <laughs> and, and and the way they, they carry themselves – with this, the no one ever believed. Everyone always believed in y'all. Isn't nobody ever believed in you? Of course, y- y'all are the big bad favorites. And then, I I understand injuries are part of sports, but damn, there's a lucky ass team. <laughs> the year they won the title, the Colin. The year they won the title, they didn't play a starting point guard. This year. They, they cheap shot Kawhi out of the playoffs. Nurkic is injured. You in, in the, Against the Jazz, George Hill is injured. They have played two series in the three years against teams at full strength. The Thunder, who damn near beat them, and the Cavs, who did beat them. So I just... They just irk me, man. But I'm not, I'm not irk like Nick. I think it's good for LeBron, and I think ultimately it will be good for the NBA. It hurt us during the regular season. Yeah. I think they're going to make some significant changes as far as multiple stars sitting, especially on, um, on the road. They'll be sitting more at home games, but it helps with this new math because the millennials, they don't know about Michael Jordan. They want to put LeBron somewhere close to him. The only way LeBron can get there really – is by winning last year against the 72, against the Warriors, greatest team, 73 wins, greatest team ever, regular season, and this year with Durant. So I'm glad they have Durant because it's going to be really good for LeBron. Let me show – I want Chris Carter's Hall of Famer start with this. Let's watch last night. I thought LaMarcus Aldridge, not a dirty player, tried to go subtly dirty and was not very good at it. Um, What did you make of putting his foot – let's go full screen on this show, everybody. Now watch this. That looks so obvious to me. Right there. I mean, Chris, come on. I think that – I don't think he's a bad player. That was very, very uh, – he was doing something that was very unnatural. Exactly. Now, that's not what – that's not a that, play – that's no, not it, what a play an NBA player makes. And I think him and Durant have uh, have history, and it's a good history. So – but it's like he wanted to do it. And I think that they've seen enough film, and they've talked about Kawhi being hurt, that this ends up just happening. Like – it, that's hard to explain. It's not a dirty play, but Kevin could have gotten hurt. Oh, there's no question. All right, so this morning, uh, Giselle Bunchen, um comes out and says, you know, my, my husband has had several um, concussions. Now, I, I, and, I, I, I didn't Why does she say that? I don't love it. I don't love it. it She's concerned for her husband's well-being. Okay, Go let's ahead, just hear Let's just play the sound. Let's yeah. just play the sound. Are you trying to get him to retire? You know, I just have to say, as a wife, I'm a little bit, you know, it's, as you know, it's not the most, like, um, let's say, an aggressive sport, right? Football, like, he had a concussion last year. I mean, he has concussions pretty much. I mean, we don't talk about it, but he does have concussions. That ain't great for Tom this morning. No. No, Tom is not happy this morning. But 
this is the wife of an NFL player. Now, my ex, if they ever interviewed her, th- there were games where I left the field, we go to dinner. She's like, you're not playing for the next two or three weeks. I'd be like, okay, when did you go to medical school? <laughs> <laughs> and then two or three days of ice, miraculously, my body would recover. Friday, i start practicing, and Sunday, she'd be in her seat and I'd be playing. I said, that's, that's, that's your job. Sit in that seat is my job to play. They got doctors that are here full time. And that's one of the reasons why you have to be careful with your family members doing interviews because they will reveal trade secrets. Uh, now, this is a brutal game. Yeah, no, 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 There's no, no. a bunch of guys walking around with concussion. So what she said, that's real. But we didn't want that information to and, get out there. And people are going to get mad at this. And I hope people listen to the that don't clip this, the whole thought. I I have incredible empathy, and I feel for guys who played, I'm not talking about in the 60s, guys in Chris's era, even guys s- shortly after Chris's mm-hmm. era, when the NFL, I believe, and I think we have data to support, had information they did not share with the players. Yes. Uh, I think players knew I could have a broken arm. I could have a torn up knee. I don't think players knew eyes wide open. This could lead to dementia, could lead to Alzheimer's, could lead to real serious mental problems. I feel for those guys. But now that the information is out there. Like we know I, smoking's bad for you. Correct. And I, I think the smoking example is a good one. I think the concuss- concussion protocol is an attempt to put a filter on a cigarette. There is no safe cigarette to smoke. There is no safe way to play football. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is a very polarizing opinion of mine. I, I think if a player, now that all the information's out there, wants to play, he should be able to go against a doctor's advice. If I'm a fringe player and I have made the decision, I am doing something that I know could hurt my long-term health, but it is worth it for what I'm doing for my family. I'm pulling them out of poverty. I'm trying to make a roster. I'm trying to make a Hall of Fame if you're not a fringe player. And I am making that sacrifice. As a grown man in this country with freedom of choice, let them do it. So I say that say this, if Tom Brady did have concussions last year, I'm glad he was allowed to play. Now, I think the doctor should have to tell him. I don't want anyone to not have the information. But if you give a player information, and they say, I saw Jamal Charles, one of my favorite players ever, a few years ago, Colts playoff game. He bumps it, he bangs his head on the turf. He wants to go back in the game to his biggest game of his life. The doctors won't let him. If Jamal wanted to play, they should let him play. I know that medical professionals are going to say, oh, it's unsafe. The game is unsafe. You are hitting people for money. That is unsafe. Chris, did was there a moment to you, did, did you ever, And because you're a smart guy, and even though the information wasn't there, was there ever a moment driving home on a Sunday thinking, I wonder what this does to me later? There's all kind of moments. I got probably more scared doing the training because we used to train so hard. And I would say after being on the field where my locker, I'm number 80, Corey Stringer's number 77. We went to training camp. He went to practice and he died. I went back in the locker room, got in my car, went back to the dormitories, had lunch with the team, but that man died. He did not go home to his son. So for me, there have been many instances which I have questioned, what the hell am I doing out here? But this is what I wanted to do. This was my dream. And the problem with Nick is saying is you might be able to do that for a hockey player, a baseball player, a basketball player. You cannot give an NFL guy the license to be able to play whenever I want to because we are crazy. But then and let him we go. we will play. But, then, but my question is this. Then, then what's the issue with that? Why not let them play? Because we would do worse damage to ourselves, especially given the information. Think, think about this. The same. Protect me from myself, please. A government agency would say no to a football player, but send a 17-year-old to Iraq with a gun. Yes, well, that's true. So we have a government with a history of starting wars over oil and sending middle class to below children yeah, to fight. below middle class. To fight for America, but... That there'll be a same agency that would fight. I, I tend to be with you is a lot of great is achieved. Look at our medical profession. What a guy has to, a woman has to do from at med school, internship, 20 to 30 to be a doctor, yes. go into deep financial debt and sleep three hours a night for about eight years. 
Like I, I, I people know, you, make sacrifices all day. Yes. for their own self, for the things that hurt themselves for the greater good of their family. And as long as they are making them eyes wide open with the information, transparency. I think we should. I think that's full freedom. I think you should allow them. The to. show is going to be called First Things First. Uh, Chris Carter and Nick Wright. It's very rare in our business when you can have a show. And you know it's going to be good. People talk about suggesting this, that. Stephen Colbert, will it work? Will it not work? Conan, will it work? Uh, you just saw the show. Uh, I can't wait for it. Thank Two you, friends Colin. We appreciate absolutely it. can't Thanks wait for all for your it. support, too. Absolutely. You've been, you've been instrumental, and you know that. Thank you. This is The Herd.